Manchester United nil, Liverpool three. It was a training session at times. It was an outclassing of the highest form in the United Twins. Need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, and including yourself, Cappy. Make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, sharing to your friends and frenemies, because let's face it, <laughs> we need all your support. We need each other, because today was a dismantling. We, while we may have started the game with an element of force against Liverpool, our weaknesses came to show against the side who, let's face it, are exceptional when it comes to pressing, putting opposition players under pressure and denying space to operate in. In possession, everything deteriorated. Misplaced passes constantly, and the more that happens is the higher the percentage of you being punished rises. And we were punished, twice by Luis Diaz and Mo Salah, the player who has the most visiting goals against United, adding on to his tally. Casemiro on the first two, forcing the issue and giving away possession and then being shrugged off the ball for the second. Hooked off at half time for Toby Collier and that said it all to be honest. It wasn't the only bad performer out there because as usual, when things get worse, a collective will sink in quicksand, hoping to be con consumed before the 73,000 or so watching can notice. Manuel Ogarte was unveiled in front of the Old Trafford crowd today, but ultimately, one man couldn't have healed what was a broken performance at home. You see in the vibe check released early Sunday morning, we spoke about the mistakes made against Brighton and how if they were replicated, no points would be obtained. At times, it was reminiscent of the 5 nil, 7 nil, and the scoreline for sure could have been closer to those because Liverpool just kept on coming. While we presented Christmas gifts three months early, I must say, I do understand when people speak about why Manchester United cannot perform with a level of consistency after three years under Eric Ten Hag and this is not me saying anything, not yet at least. I'm, I'm saying that I understand. There are other perspectives that I hear too, but ultimately I don't think I'm in the correct frame of mind to expand upon everything circling around my mind. Feels like whenever there is a massive setback, we come out and say these performances happen. Last week against Brighton was disappointing from the aspects of defensive mishaps. This week it was a total exposure of weaknesses still existing within this setup. CM, you speak about time and patience. So do I from time to time. But that doesn't exclude any of us from feeling the frustration we have when it comes to performances like this. Today, we were outclassed by a team that thrives together and elevates each other based upon camaraderie and a system that they've easily been able to transition into under Arne Schlatt. Can I say a couple more things also because on broadcast all I heard or all I heard constantly was them speaking about Marcus Rashford and, and sure he didn't do a lot today and, and, and this is not in any way a defence mission but where was the conversation about Bruno Fernandes, the captain? Speak about the struggle of our entire attack, in fact. Forget the indiv individualization. Midfield, defensive mistakes. They'll ultimately double down on the narratives that can drive conversation. But accountability in football is more than speaking about the shortcomings of one player. You speak about the manager, coaching staff, and their failures to prepare to face the club's greatest rival side historically. You speak about the entire 11 out there deployed to execute and failing miserably for the large majority of this game. I'm just slightly becoming sick and tired of hearing the same thing and seeing nothing else in terms of developing solutions. Cool. Questions were asked prior. Is it time to make changes to the lineup? Part of that happened due to Mount's injury. But also, early in the season, there's a chance to see players impress and showcase what what else they have to offer how they can help to produce a better project overall it's a pitch 
maybe these choices simply aren't there j just yet and and that again is a part of squad building over time but we do know from last season our midfield struggled against sides who were good at breaking the pressing lines and exploiting the middle of the park much like today which was extremely exposed our midfield was extremely exposed our attack struggled to finish chances didn't score a lot of goals at all I believe last campaign was the first time a Manchester United squad didn't have someone score more than 10 in the Premier League. There are growing pains that players committed to the club in the long term will have to overcome. And, and I know we faced the top, top side but the top of the Premier League for a substantial period last season under Jurgen Klopp. But it's, a, it's a still a bit of pill to swallow. When you perform in such a manner where Long before the final whistle, players are smiling, easily entering areas that should have a lock and key. Instead, all that held Liverpool from goal mouth action at times was a double knotted string. International break awaits, United fans. We both would love to hear what you have to say about the game, about the performance and, and what potentially needs to happen next up when the players do return to face Southampton, which will be another early kickoff on the 14th of this month back to back back to back defeats in the league minus three goal difference and already the negatives are overweighing positives that we on this channel have spoken about cautiously because with this club everything has to be that way make sure you're hitting that like button subscribing if you're new sharing to your friends and frenemies and until the next time We'll see you lots in a bit. Can't believe we're crushing out after the third game of the season, man. Hey, this is just the beginning. Let the games begin, my G.